Hello dear student, this is uh, Professor Rasok Kumar and I welcome to you on my video lectures. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, ch chapter number 4 that is a uh, special mechanism part 3. Uh, basically this is the last lecture uh, we are going to discuss specially on uh, special mechanisms chapter. In my previous uh, part 1 and part 2 on same chapter we have discussed a lot on various types of special mechanisms. We have derived the mathematical relation, uh, we have analyzed the, uh, all the special mechanisms. So right now it's time to discuss a little bit portion of uh, this special mechanism which remain to complete as per your uh, subject point of view. Let's start the first type of mechanism that is an automobile shearing gear mechanism. Basically uh, we know that uh, this is the mechanism uh, especially which uh, we are using in case of uh, four wheel automobile uh, mechanism or automobile vehicles. Uh, generally it is used for changing the direction of wheel so as to move the automobile in desired uh, path. Generally the motion between the wheels of an automobile with a road surface should be of pure rolling. Uh, because of pure rolling action uh, you are getting the required amount of rotation in that way you are getting uh, the required uh, traveling path and there should be not any kind of uh, skidding between uh, road wheel and road surface. There should be a pure rolling action uh, at the point of contact between a road wheel and road surface. So this is a prime and essential requirement that uh, your automobile wheel should have the pure rolling action instead of a mixing of rolling and uh, uh, say skidding actions. Now uh, we know that uh, the steering gear mechanism we are using for uh, uh, turning the vehicle especially the front wheels uh, because we know that uh, whenever you are taking left or right turn at that time your inner or outer wheel required uh, differential uh, path to be traveled that means inner wheel required a little bit path to cover whereas outer wheel required a uh, larger path to cover then and then your uh, entire vehicle will move in either left or right direction so uh, there is uh, some proportional relation uh, must be there in order to satisfy the condition of inner wheel that is uh, moving in uh, very less um, uh, displacement whereas outer wheel will cover the very uh, large displacement so this is function uh, this is the basic requirement and of course it will be uh, fulfilled by using an automobile steering gear mechanism. If you are talking about the wheel arrangement then look at the screen uh, you have given uh, the E and F wheel that is actually the front wheel which is mounted on front uh, axles whereas uh, uh, the rear wheel uh, G and H uh, which are mounted on back axle. Now from the figure you can also see that there is a common center uh, in that generally known as an instantaneous center. Uh, which is located by intersecting uh, the uh, axis uh, of or we can say that the intersecting projection taken from the uh, point B and point A. So this is the, the point or the center or we can say that the internal center about which uh, uh, the both of the wheel uh, especially front wheel move uh, or co uh, turn little bit co uh, angle uh, or especially on left or right hand side. And one more thing about instantaneous center is that uh, uh, it is always located to the uh, uh, real axis of uh, the back wheel. That means over here you can see that uh, on the line of GH wheel this instantaneous center is located. One more thing about the instantaneous center is that uh, it mega, uh, makes an angle theta with the, the front wheel B whereas it makes, uh, theta, uh, it makes uh, an angle 5. Uh, with the uh, uh, front wheel A. So this is what some geometrical orientation of uh, an instantaneous center with respect to front wheel A and uh, B. Now it's time to have the uh, analysis uh, of uh, the particular automobile steering gear mechanism. But before it you can also refer the uh, figure that you have given on right hand side. Uh, look at that figure it is actually uh, shows that the front wheel is connected with uh, two rear axle and uh, both of the rear axle uh, in which especially the steering mechanism is connected. Basically uh, uh, there are numbers of parts and uh, we can say that links uh, to be used uh, for the assembly of entire uh, steering mechanism with uh, rear, uh, front axle and the uh, front wheel. Look at tie rod is also there, rack and pinion and some gear uh, me mechanisms are also to be introduced uh, for the steering gear mechanism. 
now let's start to have the few mathematical analysis but before it uh, we should consider that uh, a small a stand uh, for the width of the front wheel a and b whereas a uh, small b stand for the width uh, between point a and b over here point a and b is generally known as a pivoting point so about which both of the wheel axle or say the uh, front wheel axle are mounted so over here a uh, small b stand for the uh, the width of uh, width between two pivoting points and uh, finally L that is the small L that is the wheel bed that means the distance between the center uh, between the front and uh, rear wheel so this is what about the few notation we require uh, before uh, having the mathematical analysis now just you have to consider uh, two triangle triangle IBD and triangle IAC uh, if you are taking triangle IBC, IBD, then look at this. This is triangle I, B, and D. And by using the value of port theta relation, of course, you have ID upon BD. Once again, ID will remain ID, but the BD is equal to, we can say that the length, or we can say that the distance between pivots of the front axle. So uh, uh, we can say that the BD can be replaced by small l. So in that way, you have the equation like cot theta is equal to ID upon small l. If you are considering triangle IAC and uh, by putting the values of the cot theta, cot 5, you will have the cot 5 is equal to IC upon AC. Again, AC can be replaced with the small l. So finally, uh, the equation for the cot 5 that will be equal to IC upon small l. Now just you have to subtract the cot theta from the cot 5 so the equation will becomes like uh, cot 5 minus cot theta and that is equal to uh, we can say that uh, the ic upon small l uh, minus id upon small l and we know that l is the common term among uh, both of the uh, steps so ultimately 1 upon l bracket ic minus id that will be the equation for cot 5 minus cot theta Still, you can uh, simplify further, uh, like uh, we know that IC minus ID. So, suppose you are taking the measurement of IC, that means uh, this uh, length of link you have to consider, and you have to subtract uh, the length ID from it. So, ultimately, you are getting uh, the net uh, dimension that is the CD. And of course, we know that CD is equal to small b. So, again, we can have the option to replace IC minus ID in terms of uh, small b. So ultimately the entire equation will become cot 5 minus cot theta and that is equal to cd upon small l and cd is replaced with b so we can say that it is equal to b upon l. So this equation actually it is the fundamental equation for correct steering. If this condition is satisfied then and then motion of wheel will be of uh, say pure rolling and there will be no any kind of skidding or slipping of wheel with respect to road surface. Uh, generally this uh, mechanism used for the automobile uh, as we have discussed earlier and uh, the mechanism used for the automatically adjusting the values of theta and phi for correct steering are generally known as a steering gears. So this is what about uh, an automobile steering gear mechanism. After that uh, there is one more type of automobile gear mechanism that is Davis steering gear mechanism. Basically, it is based on a quadric kinematic chain and it has uh, the four turning pair. It uh, have the links like capital AB, capital AJ, capital JK and KB in which you can see from the figure that AB and uh, JK uh, both are having the parallel relation. Uh, now link JK is very shorter than link AB and it is connected at the pivots of the sub axle of the two front wheels by means of two belt crank levers ESC and FB key. You can also see the figure, you can compare uh, both of the diagrams. The link JK slides in the bearings R and S well, uh, and the pin join at the J and K in the slotted links AU and BB. So, uh, at point J and K, they form a combination of sliding and turning pair. So, this is what about the assembly of various links and uh, say the points uh, in especially Davis steering gear mechanism. Now, it's time to have the little bit uh, mathematical analysis and again uh, there is a small notation. 
uh, small l stand for the wheelbase b is the distance between viewers of front axle and over here small h that will be the height of the link jk from the front axle now when the vehicle moves on the straight path both the links aj and bk are inclined at an angle alpha from this uh, vertical uh, direction so from the figure if you are considering this link uh, uh, aj and this link uh, bk to which uh, we can say that uh, the wheels are right edge ultimately both uh, whenever uh, your vehicle move in straight forward direction at that time uh, both link uh, uh, make equal angle alpha with vertical axis you can see that both the link have equal angle alpha on the both of the side uh, with uh, we can say that the uh, vertical axis now for a moment consider that uh, from straight line or straight path uh, your vehicle is turning either on left or right side but in this case uh, ve our vehicle is turning on uh, right hand side so new position will take place uh, the wheel uh, have the new position and it is represented by e1 and f1 so over here this was the initial position and whenever you are taking right turn uh, the in uh, front wheel will occupy the new position uh, like e1 and f1 and which makes angle theta and phi with the uh, rear uh, wheel axle and in that way uh, both of the wheels maintain its curve path and whenever the front wheel making an angle theta and phi of course uh, this link jk will also displace from uh, jk to j1 k1 so ultimately we can say that uh, by taking a right turn and the link jk will displace by amount x now uh, kindly consider the triangle uh, uh, this triangle and you are getting tan alpha is equal to c by h so we know that uh, if you are considering this triangle uh, you can have the tan alpha is equal to this is the c and this is the height so tan alpha will become a c by h similarly you can take the more angle tan alpha plus phi and it will become c plus x upon h again uh, by simplification it will give uh, the new relation like uh, tan alpha plus tan phi upon uh, 1 minus tan alpha into tan phi actually it is the equation of trigonometric relation and which is putting over here you will have the c plus x upon h now just you have to put the values of tan alpha that is equal to c upon h in this equation and you have to just solve it so finally it will become c upon h plus uh, tan phi uh, 1 minus c upon h into tan phi that is equal to c plus x upon h by taking lcm you will have the c plus h tan phi upon h minus c tan phi and that is equal to c plus x upon h And of course, uh, this cross multiplication uh, give us uh, the relation like uh, h of uh, c plus h tan five is equal to c plus x into bracket h minus c tan five. So from this equation, kindly convert uh, this entire equation in terms of tan five. So it will become uh, tan five is equal to x into h upon uh, uh, a square plus a c square plus x into c and inverse of it it will give uh, cot 5 and that is equal to h square plus c square plus xc upon x into h uh, similarly you can follow the same procedure for the angle tan alpha minus theta and that will become uh, the c minus x upon h again by putting the trigonometric relation and replacing uh, tan alpha minus theta by tan alpha minus tan theta upon of 1 plus 10 alpha into 10 theta and that is equal to c minus x upon h again 10 alpha is replaced by c upon h over here so ultimately equation will become c upon h minus 10 theta upon 1 plus c upon h into 10 theta and that is equal to c minus x upon h cross multiplication give us the new equation and that is uh, look like h bracket c minus h 10 theta is equal to c minus x uh, bracket h plus c tan theta again uh, multiplying with the term h to the terms with the brackets it will have the h c minus h square 
और टेन थीटा इज इक्वल टू सी एच प्लस सी स्क्वेर टेन थीटा माइनस एक्स एच माइनस एक्स सी टेन थीटा एंड अगेन जस्ट यू हैव टू कन्वर्ट द एंटायर इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेन थीटा सो यू विल हैव टेन थीटा इज इक्वल टू एक्स इंटू एच अपॉन एच स्क्वेर प्लस सी स्क्वेर माइनस एक्स सी एंड बाई इनवर्सिंग इट यू विल हैव द कोट थीटा एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू एच स्क्वेर प्लस सी स्क्वेर माइनस एक्स सी अपॉन एक्स एच सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन हैव द रिलेशन ऑफ टेन थीटा एंड कोट थीटा नाउ वी नो दैट इनिशियली वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिराइव द कंडीशन फॉर द करेक्ट स्टीयरिंग एंड दैट इज कोट फाइव माइनस कोट थीटा दैट शुड बी ऑलवेज इक्वल टू बी अपॉन एल सो जस्ट यू हैव टू पुट द वैल्यूज ऑफ कोट फाइव एंड कोट थीटा दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिराइव इन दिस केस एंड एज अफकोर्स फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस स्लाइड by putting that value over here uh, you will have a, the relation like h square plus c square plus xc upon xh minus h square plus c square minus xc upon xh and that is equal to b upon l just by solving and taking common lcm you will have the 2xc upon xh and that is equal to b by l again uh, uh, you can uh, simplify better in terms of 2 into c upon h is equal to b upon l because uh, x x will be cancel out so ultimately you will have 2 into say c upon h is equal to b upon l so ultimately we know that c upon h that can be replaced by tan alpha so ultimately equation will be 2 tan alpha that is equal to b upon l and finally uh, the final equation for the correct steering condition that will be the tan alpha is equal to b upon 2l so this is the pre term condition uh, tan alpha is equal to b upon 2l in order to have the steering of your automobile in correct position effectively work generally the ratio b upon l should be kept between 0.4 to 4.5 so that the angle alpha lies between 11 degree to 14 degree at least so if you are satisfying uh, the condition or your steering mechanism satisfying this condition then and then Uh, your steering mechanism for uh, the uh, front axle will work properly along with this uh, this mechanism is of course uh, very much effective for the uh, we can say that uh, 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 front wheel operation but still it uh, connected with uh, we can say that it has the few uh, disadvantage or limitation to Uh, of course it gives the correct steering but uh, due to presence of a few sliding pairs in the uh, particular mechanism in this mechanism friction is more so this is what uh, the little bit uh, disadvantage associated uh, with linkage of a particular mechanism give uh, that is given in davis steering mechanism so of course we know that friction causes more uh, power or the we can say that uh, torque to be loss and uh, it also causes Uh, to wear and tear so uh, this is the one limitation which is associated uh, with the davis uh, steering mechanism after that the third type of uh, steering gear mechanism that we are going to discuss uh, that is ackermann's steer ge- uh, steering gear mechanism basically uh, this is uh, based on four bar kinematic chain and uh, Uh, we know that uh, the four bar kinematic chain is used in case of ackermann steering gear mechanism so look at the diagram you have given ackermann steering gear mechanism and uh, generally uh, if you are talking about uh, the constructional detail of each and every links of ackermann steering gear mechanism then it is uh, look like that links ak and bl are equal in length and they are inclined at an angle alpha with the vertical when the vert- uh, vehicle is moving in straight path uh, uh, this is very similar as that of what we have discussed in case of davis steering mechanism generally link kl is shorter in length than the link ab but uh, both the links are parallel to each other and uh, link uh, eak and uh, fbl from the bell crank levers and are uh, which are pivoted at a and b respectively now in order to satisfy the condition of steering we explained uh, uh, earlier in case of the various steering gear mechanism the link ak and bl are suitably proportional and uh, angle alpha should be selected this was the pre condition that uh, angle of inclination and uh, length uh, of the links or ratio of that particular link should be selected in such a way that uh, 
the entire mechanism works with a very effective now uh, uh, in case of Ackerman steering gear mechanism I guess uh, uh, we can say that the uh, four uh, bar chain mechanism and uh, this mechanism gives correct steering only by adopting a few uh, say conditions or a few positions uh, first position when the vehicle moves on the straight path it will uh, uh, work very effectively when the vehicle moves to the right hand side an angle theta of the turning is such that the vehicle axis uh, a e1 and b f1 intersect on the axis of the brake wheel and of course it is uh, also used whenever the vehicle moves to left hand side uh, with uh, taking turning angle theta so this is what about the basic constructional mechanism and uh, of course this mechanism is used uh, whenever uh, the, your vehicle is moving in either straight line either taking left turn or either taking or we can say that moving uh, to the uh, right hand side now the condition for the correct steering will remain same as that of the uh, david's uh, steer mechanism and that is quote 5 minus quote uh, theta it should be always equal to ratio of b upon l and other working principle is very similar to as that of the Davis uh, steering mechanism so we are not going for the depth analysis of uh, Ackerman steering gear mechanism now after that uh, the point number four that we are going to discuss that is hooks joint or universal joint uh, generally uh, hook joint is commonly uh, also known as a universal coupling and it is used to connect uh, two non-parallel and intersecting shafts it is also used for the transmission of motion and power for a shaft with angular misalignment uh, is uh, possible in between both of the shaft where uh, flexible coupling cannot solve the purposes secondly a co common application of uh, this type of joint uh, for the transmission of power from the engine gearbox to the rear axle is the best example uh, you have seen that the engine uh, crank shaft is uh, uh, coupled with the propeller shaft uh, of the automobile so at that time whatever the joint is required it is made possible by using hooks joint now it is also used to transmit uh, power to different spindle that means uh, suppose any machine is there having the uh, numbers of uh, spindle that means multi spindle is there and you require to transmit the power to all spindle of course you can use uh, hooks joint or say the universal joint look at the diagram you have given a single hook joint uh, it has basically two u-shaped fork each connected to driving and driven shaft so, so this is uh, the fork uh, having the u-shaft and uh, both of the fork are connected on uh, its relevant uh, shaft either driving or uh, say the driven shaft now both of the uh, uh, four end that means uh, two end from the left hand side fork and two end from the right hand side fork all four four ends of that fork are connected with a central part or piece and that piece or uh, part is generally known as we can say that cross so ultimately cross uh, joining uh, the both of the fork or either on the driving side or a driven side both of the forks are connected by uh, with the help of center block or even cross now the center piece uh, may have the shape of a square or a cross or square it's not uh, always necessary that uh, the shape that you have given in this slide uh, center block has always this type of shape but it will be uh, it may be possible that it has uh, the shape of uh, like a square cross or square too the arms of the cross are perpendicular to each other uh, you can see from the figure this is arm of the cross and both are having the perpendicularity relation uh, with each other so suppose this is the driving shaft and this is the driven shaft and you require to connect both of uh, that particular driving and driven shaft to transmit the motion and power from one end to other end uh, by joining the fork and fork are joining uh, by the central block or cross in that way entire assembly become possible now you are if you are rotating the driving shaft ultimately the fork on the driving side will rotate and it is connected with the central block block so central block of course will get rotated and it goes to rotate the driving fork and ultimately driven shaft 
uh, it will of course at the end will protest so in that way we can have the power transmission uh, uh, one more thing that should be discussed here in about the books 20 is that suppose uh, there is a little bit anger between driving and uh, say the driven shaft at that time you can easily uh, join both of the shaft by using this uh, hooks joint or universal term. So this is the special application wherein uh, uh, suppose any two shaft driving and driven shaft having some angular misalignment and you require to transmit power over there of course you can use hooks joint and uh, effectively by using hook joints uh, the power and motion or even torque can be transmitted from driving shaft to driven shaft. After that, uh, it's time to have the little bit analysis of hooks joint and for that uh, uh, kindly consider two triangles and from the triangles you have the relation like angle of uh, OC1E is equal to theta and triangle OC1 dash into F is equal to. Now uh, tan theta from that triangle OC1E and uh, OC1 dash F uh, you are getting tan phi. So from the both of the triangle you have relation tan theta is equal to uh, OE upon EC1 and uh, tan phi that will become uh, uh, OF upon FC1. Now just you have to uh, divide tan theta uh, by uh, uh, sorry tan phi by tan theta so ultimately you are getting the new relation like tan phi upon tan theta that is equal to OF upon FC1 dash uh, upon OE upon EC1 dash. But we know that uh, the dimensions of the links FC1 dash and EC1 both are same so ultimately by putting that relation in uh, this equation you will have tan phi upon tan theta that is equal to OF upon FC1 dash upon OE upon EC1. So ultimately your final equation will become OF upon OE that is equal to OF1 upon OE. Now consider triangle OF1E and uh, find out the values of cos alpha. So it will become cos alpha is equal to OE upon OF1. And now just uh, you have to put the values uh, of OE upon OF1 in a previous uh, equation that means uh, the tan phi upon tan theta. So ultimately you are getting the new relation that uh, tan phi upon tan theta that is equal to 1 upon cos alpha. By simplifying it will give tan theta is equal to cos alpha into tan phi. Now uh, consider the omega 1 and omega 2 as uh, angular speed of driving shaft and driven shaft and it will become d theta upon dt and d phi upon dt. We know that d theta is equal to rate of change of angular displacement and d phi is also rate of change of angular displacement but it will be the driven side. So ultimately we know that uh, the tan phi is equal to cos alpha into tan phi and, and now just you have to differentiate uh, equation uh, of tan theta is equal to cos alpha into tan phi so you are getting uh, the equation like uh, by differentiating this equation uh, you will have the uh, you are getting ratio of angular velocity like omega 2 upon omega 1 that is equal to sec square theta upon cos alpha into sec square phi that the relation uh, that you are getting if you are uh, uh, differentiating the equation of uh, tan theta but now we know that uh, the sec square phi is equal to 1 plus uh, tan square phi and uh, of course by putting the values of uh, values of the this equation uh, over here you are getting the sec square phi is equal to uh, 1 plus uh, tan square theta upon cos square alpha now uh, we know that uh, the sec square is equal to 1 plus sin square theta upon cos square theta into 1 upon cos square alpha by simplifying you uh, you will have ultimately uh, sec square phi is equal to cos square theta bracket 1 minus uh, sin square alpha plus sin square theta upon cos square theta into cos square alpha. Now just you have to put that values in uh, equation of uh, we can say that the ratio of angular velocity you are getting that omega 2 upon omega 1 that will be the 1 upon cos square theta upon 1 minus uh, cos square theta into sin square alpha uh, upon cos square theta into cos square alpha. If you are solving uh, uh, this relation, ultimately you are getting uh, n2 is equal to n1 cos alpha upon 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha. 
so this is the condition at the end you are getting uh, for in terms of relation or the, the speed should be limited in that particular uh, relation so this is the last lecture and uh, in that particular lecture we have discussed about uh, uh, automobiles uh, steering gear mechanism especially uh, we can say that the davis gear mechanism uh, we have also discussed Ackerman steering gear mechanism at the end we have also analyzed the hooks joint or say the universal universal uh, joint uh, still you are finding any difficulty uh, kindly ask the questions so we have the solution and of course uh, uh, kindly stay tuned with us because uh, we are running a number of uh, video lectures uh, meanwhile so thank you thank you very much